Hey everyone, Ethan here from Extreme RC 4x4. Today we're going to be doing uh, a trailing arm kit install on my Traxxas TRX4 Defender. This is the 12.8 wheelbase, but the kit uh, is also designed to work with the 12.3 wheelbase, which uh, I'm sure is a much more common uh, setup. Uh, I haven't really done much with this thing. It's pretty much entirely stock, aside from wheels and tires, but here I have the kit that we're going to be installing today. It's really um, much more straightforward on the TRX4 than any of the other trucks that I've made kits for at this point. So uh, we can go ahead and see what all is in the kit. Okay, so included with the kit here, I know you guys are a little bit far away, but uh, we have two new shock towers. These are 3D printed. Um, shock towers will work with both the 12.3 and the 12.8 wheelbase. Um, we have a couple of sets of spacers. Uh, they're kind of short and fat ones. And then I have two tall and skinny ones, two M3 by 16 screws, two M3 lock nuts, two M3 by 25 millimeter screws, and then two SSD rod ends that we're going to be installing on the shocks. And then we also have our trailing arm mounts that go onto the frame, uh, much smaller than the previous ones that we've seen for other chassis. Uh, you're also going to need uh, a set of trailing arms. Make sure that when you're getting them, you get a Yeti length trailing arm. That's what this kit is designed for. Uh, along with that, I it will not be including ball joints uh, for whatever arms you choose. You're going to have to provide those yourself. I have gotten that question in the past. Uh, the arms that I'm using here are SSD Yeti trailing arms. These are also available in black, but I prefer the aluminum color myself. So uh, let's get right into the install. It's going to be pretty quick, as you guys can tell by the amount of hardware we have here. So remove the body, um, and it's something I should mention, if you are running the inner fenders like I am, uh, they will require some trimming, uh, probably in this area, um, because we are changing the position of the shocks. On a 12.3 wheelbase, you are most likely going to be needing some trimming uh, in this area right here. Uh, because the shock will be moved so far forward so I just want to make sure that you guys know about that so uh, that you don't try to install the kit and find out that you have to do some trimming that you didn't think you needed to do so uh, first step let's go ahead and get this wheel off here And with that out of the way, we're going to take the shock bolt out of the bottom of the axle. And then I'm going to pull the link out of the bottom. Then we can take a pair of pliers and we're going to pop this uh, wall joint out of the link end. All right, so that was a little bit tougher to get out, but uh, the vice grips did the trick. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back where it was. We're gonna use this as a spacer because it is aluminum, so should help us get some strength in there. And also, I'm gonna remove from the chassis side. With this screw we can just replace it and if you wanted to you could also take the ball joint out of the top side of the link but it's not really structural okay now we're going to place a trailing arm on the side of 
the axle where the shock was bolted to, the same position actually. And we're just using the original screw that was in that place uh, in order to do so. Now we can move on to our shock towers. So unbolt the shock first. Then um, we are going to be removing this body post assembly. If you have a TRX-4 that is running the 12.3 wheelbase, you'll probably have a bar that uh, pushes back or not necessarily pushes back, but moves this body post um, back so that it's in the same position as this 12.8 wheelbase model. Um, you will need this straight version that you can see here on the 12.8. Um, I'll put a link to that on the website if you need to purchase it. I'm not sure if it's included as a spare part or anything. So take out that screw that holds that together and then we're gonna unbolt the shock tower with these two screws. The two screws that are holding your shock tower on are gonna be longer than the other two screws uh, that are here, uh, depending on what wheelbase you're running. So we will need to utilize uh, the very first screw and the very last screw. So on this 12.8 uh, model, I need to remove uh, the screw going into the battery tray and put it into the center hole. If you're running a 12.3 wheelbase, you're going to need to remove the screw back here and move it into one of these center holes. Now the two screws that were used to attach the shock tower we're going to be reusing. The shock towers go on with the shock mounts going forwards. And these also have a body mount printed into them, so you won't even need to mess with removing that completely, and your body post holes will stay in the same place. You guys can see what I'm talking about with the trimming uh, up here um, it might even be in your best interest just to sand this with the Dremel uh, slightly until you're getting all the clearance that you need uh, this screw that was originally holding this body post assembly on we can reattach Get rid of that shock tower for a second and now we're going to work on the shock so pull the spring back remove our spring collar take the spring off and now if you have a set of shock shaft pliers kudos to you i should be using a pair but i don't have any uh, so i'm just using a towel with a pair of vice grips and we're going to need to remove this Traxxas rod end because it is too wide to fit into these trailing arms. And then we'll be replacing it with this SSD rod end which is provided in the kit. And we're just going to thread that on until there's no threads showing on the shock shaft. Alright. Now we'll put our spring back on. The shock collar. And with that done, we can reattach the shock. I'm just going to put it in the middle position here on the back set of holes. If you're running a 12.3 wheelbase, that's going to be the front set of holes. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot we do need uh, one of these short and fat washers, spacers, whatever you want to call them. All 
All right, switching bits to a 16 millimeter, sorry, not a 16 millimeter driver, but uh, putting in the 16 millimeter screw to attach your shock to the trailing arm. Okay, so once you have this 16 millimeter screw in here, um, the lock nuts. Okay, sorry to mislead you guys, there's actually four lock nuts in the kit now and four 16 millimeter screws. 
Uh, the lock nuts you can use on the back side of the trailing arms. Uh, if you're using some stock Yeti ones, it'd be plastic, but uh, mine are aluminum and they're threaded from SSD, so uh, it's not a concern for me. All right, so in order to attach the mounts to the chassis, we'll need to remove just two screws. Uh, first, the one at the chassis um, for the skid plate. And then one of these front lower link screws needs to come out. We'll use this lower link screw on the frame. The mounts go on just like this. Uh, if you can see here, uh, the front set of holes is used for the 12.8. The set in the further back position is for the 12.3 inch wheelbase. And then the hole furthest to the back is for the trailing arms, of course. Just loosely get that set on there. Then we're gonna take uh, this taller spacer and place it between the skid plate and the trailing arm mount. Then we'll take a 25 millimeter screw and get it set in there and make sure we have everything aligned and then you can tighten it down we can attach the trailing arms to the 16 millimeter screw through the bracket and to a lock nut And make sure you tighten the screw that we have on the top for the frame rail here. So nice simple bracket, uh, just enough to get the job done. Um, and it should be really nice and strong braced against the skid plate. And we don't lose any ground clearance in the center with that. So uh, that is one side done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then I'll be right back with you guys. Alright guys, well that's the complete kit installed along with my SSD trailing arms. Um, parts left just should be your two shock towers, your original lower links, uh, your original rod ends off of the shocks, and then the two small screws that came out of the frame. I have two lock nuts left over, that's only because I'm using aluminum trailing arms that are threaded. So uh, now we can talk about kind of the benefits of running a trailing arm suspension. Uh, basically what this does is allows you increased suspension travel uh, out of a factory length shock. Um, at the mounting positions I have, it's really nothing dramatic but uh, still will give you increased suspension travel, flexibility, um, all those things that people like to look for. Uh, you'll definitely need to do some minor trimming here or along with this 12.8 wheelbase, you could mount the shock uh, even further forward or mount this shock in this position here. All right guys, just wanted to do a little bit better display of the suspension travel you get with the kit here. Uh, I felt like I didn't do a very good job originally, but when I set it down, go full droop, 
Uh, with the tires just touching the ground, probably get around with the chassis level two. Probably get around half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. Um, might be pushing it a little bit for maximum suspension travel or the gain suspension travel in the rear. Sorry, so half an inch more in the rear than in the front uh, with the setup. And I have mine set up to bottom out at the same point, but uh, you can always run yours in the higher position, which will um, bottom out a little bit lower in the rear than in the front. And then you'll probably only get a little bit more down travel in the rear than you get in the front. So anyways, guys, just thought I'd demonstrate that for you. Uh, the locking differential in the rear still works uh, when you do this install. Uh, something I do get asked about is ground clearance and you can see with this kit uh, these mounting plates are actually higher than the skid plate. I don't know if you guys can see that. I can see that. So uh, just slightly higher. Uh, the trailing arms on here I think look really really cool in my opinion. That's probably one of my favorite things about them. You shouldn't have any issues with these 3d printed shock towers if you do let me know i'll get you taken care of as always um but i have been running shock towers like these on my power wagon project for probably a couple mm, probably coming up on a year now here and i don't have any issues with that so i don't think people will have any issues with this but like i said if you do i'll get you taken care of so Really simple kit, uh, easy to install, and in my opinion, it's some good suspension improvements. Um, as you can tell by moving the shock forward, uh, if you think about it, it gives the, the axle and the chassis more leverage on the shocks, which kind of helps overcome uh, some of the drag that you feel on these RC truck shocks as it has to go through all of those O-rings. I don't know if that makes a huge difference to everyone, but to me it makes it feel like the shocks get a lot softer and smoother, so it's uh, easy for the vehicle to overcome that friction. But um, like I said, you will need some trimming on the inner fenders, some parts of this Traxxas platform, but I think I'm doing... Uh, custom body for this at some point I don't know how high that is on my priority list right now but um, I will be doing something with this eventually so anyways guys thanks for watching if you're interested in the kit please make sure to have a look at it on my website streamrc4x4.com uh, as always I will have all the parts that you might need listed in the description below along with some more information about the product Anyways guys, thanks for watching, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.